welcome to the University of Trinidad and Tobago's Master of Science in Innovation, Manufacturing Management and Entrepreneurship, IMME 2019 International Study Tour. This study tour lasted five days. We visited and studied Suriname, supervised by Dr. Nadine Sangster and Mr. Aaron Amarali. We examined thematic areas during our tour, such as renewable energy, agro-processing, ecotourism, and the assembly type and related industries. We would like to share our experiences with you, with the end goal being trade relations between Trinidad and Suriname, and the generation of entrepreneurial interest. The tour started today with a boat ride through the Suriname River in Komiwijni. The trip was approximately two and a half hours as this was the only route to the Alliance plantation. On arrival to Alliance, we were then transported through the plantation. The fruits here were citrus and similar to those available back in Trinidad and Tobago with some slight variation. The plantation's area is vast and has great potential. But with the low labor force that is currently available, it is not possible to maximize on this space at this time. The facility is powered, as is most of Suriname, by a renewable energy source via the hydro dam. And manufacturing technology in terms of management and equipment would be a great asset here in the plantation's development. The tour, however, had an involuntary shift as a sudden downpour overcame us. As this happened, lunch occurred. We departed from Allianz, then ventured to the Frederiksdorp plantation. This was a plantation which has been converted to a tourist resort. This plantation has changed product every time it changed owners, from sugar to cocoa to even coffee. The plantation was finally renovated with funding from the Netherlands. Our meet was with the Suriname Business Forum at the hotel. The manager for business support services, Mr. Ratan Kalka, delivered a very informative talk on the Suriname Business Forum, or SBF for short. He was very much open with us and willing to share his vast knowledge since he has been part of the SBF Forum since inception and has other experiences which has made him extremely knowledgeable and versatile. Uh, for the timber we export to the EU, but uh, apart, but the, the, you can say 80% of our export goes to, the, it goes to Asia, India, China, Malaysia, because they are the biggest importers of, of wood. Uh, when it goes to bananas, our bananas are being exported in uh, the French island, French territories, and the Caribbean region. Also, a lot of bananas go to Trinidad. Now we have good market at Trinidad because we have one of the, I would say we have the best banana of the world. He was able to open our eyes and minds to the reality of the unique function of the SBF for which there is no other comparison in the region. He also alluded to us some of the highs and lows of the business world in Suriname, the importance of communication between all relevant parties, and the important role of relationships with other countries. Faris is a family-owned business which is part of a group of family-owned companies who provide all levels of the supply chain. With the change of management from father to son, there has been a significant shift towards technology and processing of meats within the last five years. 
They are now able to produce a larger variation of products, including various types of sausages and salted meats. As many as 88 different products for sale on the local market as well as limited export regionally to Guyana and Barbados. We had the pleasure of visiting the Cool Dipsing Total Concrete Company, one of the many subsidiaries owned by Cool Dipsing. Adorned in safety gears, we were given a guided tour through the facility. Seeing few workers on the production floor with multiple conveyor belts left us wondering if they were on a break to give us a chance to see the facility. But this was quickly cleared up as we entered the control room. With only four workers, they were able to set the product to be made, ensure efficient and quality production, move the blocks from the stack to the curing area and package them. Their system was fully automated. Staff fully trained for use and maintenance of the equipment. Schedule set for production and maintenance to ensure that they always meet their production goals. This was truly a sight to behold. Esperon Company Limited is a lumber and furniture company which was started in 1986 by Mr. Puran himself and was handed over to the next generation upon his retirement. The beauty and craftsmanship of the items seen were breathtaking. Though experiencing some electrical supply issues, they were able to guide us through the process of receiving and drying the local timber and then crafting it into the beautiful pieces on shore. They have been marketable in Suriname and is currently attempting to slip into the Trinidad and Tobago market. They have been successful in making some linkages as well as sales to individual clients. However, they prefer to make a bigger mark through showroom representations. The visit to Doxon Club was truly a remarkable experience. This facility is a hatchery and poultry abattoir. The supply chain is monitored from egg purchase to hatching in the incubators. A complete monitoring of the entire process. The company is currently undergoing improvements in the installation of a processing line and is setting the way for improved export sales. On a much lighter note, the students that were there for the visit can testify after rigorous sampling that the meat is of good quality. The first visit for today was at the in vitro plants, the parent company being Grisalco. We arrived at 9.30 a.m. and was received by the management team Mr. Marcel and Mrs. Isumba. A short PowerPoint presentation was conducted which outlined the nature of the company and its operations. The company is a nursery that uses selective propagation to create disease virus and pest resistant elite crops. The plants are for typical farm crops and ornamental uses. In a nutshell, they produce high quality seedlings derived from research and development and they partner with international companies to do this.
We were then given a tour of the greenhouses and were amazed at the size and system of the area and the level of control that is being implemented at the facility. Thereafter, we thanked the in vitro plants team and we were off to another organization. The next stop was Redisa Limited. We arrived at 10.25 a.m. and after a short wait, we were greeted by Mr. Ali, the quality manager. The company is a large one that manufactures beverages such as milk, juice and bottled water. Here we saw the different lines and saw the implementation of a vertical integration structure where the supply chain reaches as far back as the electrical power supply. Mr. Ali was quite accommodating and open to all our questions on the operations. After the thank you and the goodbye session, we boarded the bus. Our final visit was to the Polytechnic College of Suriname. Here, we were received by some of the lecturers and they gave us a briefing on the college's offering. This is where we realized that in Trinidad and Tobago, we are very fortunate as we have both the facilities and the staff to educate the students. We were made aware of the lack of facilities and teaching staff available to the people. And just by the size of the campus, we realized that there is a need for tertiary level expansion. My visit to Suriname on the International Study Tour was an experience. Experience in the sense that there is a lot of business opportunities in the manufacturing industry sector. I saw that opportunity on my visit to Kuldeep Singh's block company. Having discussions with the operations manager about the cast iron products that the company used as grills and covers with their concrete products, he indicated that all their cast iron products came from the UK. He also then mentioned that presently they are offloading about 15 40 feet containers on the compound. In Trinidad, we have all the technical expertise and the knowledge of metal cast. We also have metal casting companies such as Williams Foundry and Mustafa's Engineering. These companies do work for the oil industry and other companies like Wasa and Tiantec, to name a few. I myself do have a small to medium casting company where I do manufacture both ferrous and non-ferrous products. I will be I will be in contact with my tour supervisors, Dr. Nadine Sangster and Mr. Evan Amorali, to arrange a meeting with the president of the Suriname Business Forum and the and the operations manager of Kuldeep Singh's block company for us to start discussions about manufacturing those products in Trinidad or setting up a foundry company for casting those products in Suriname. Presently, I am working on a business plan. In concluding, I must thank UTT and the IMME team. The international study tour was definitely a learning experience. One thing that stood out to me was their lack of exterior flooring and landscaping. Our visit to Varos brought some insight as to how costly interior flooring is. The reason for this is because they lack the necessary skill and expertise. Providing landscaping, interior and exterior flooring, along with its maintenance services, seemed like a viable opportunity. The main business opportunity I saw was in the technological arena which is an automated PBX system to assist in centralized control to allow all the calls coming into your company's many phones to be accessed by one number. That means that instead of including a long list of individual phone numbers in directories or advertisements, you could just list one number. Thank you for accompanying us on this journey to Suriname. We hope you enjoyed the visit. For more information, please check us online at utt.com or at our website at imme2019.com.